The name White Tails from Scratch derives from us getting a piece of property and transforming it into the best possible property that it can be. The property has the right infrastructure and the right elements to hold and grow multiple high age structure deer from five and a half to eight and a half years old. You know, the goal of Whitetail from Scratch is really just taking this property that we purchased, it's just a raw asset, blank canvas, and you know, putting a plan in place with the AWS system, all the habitat improvements and strategies we want to implement, and trying to hold upper age class bucks, mature bucks, you know, five, six, seven years old, and eventually harvest them. At the very beginning, the first thing we had to do was neutralize the human element. In Minnesota, we have our gun hunting season right in the, the peak of the rut. So our, our first phase was to set up little areas that the deer would be comfortable in. Part of the fun process here, when we first purchased the property, the age class of bucks that we saw, the upper end was really that three-year-old level. And there were a couple four-year-olds that would run into the cameras every once in a while during the rut, but that was about it. That was the max age class of the property and the surrounding areas because, you know, these deer are really using a lot of people's properties. It's not like they just stay on one piece. And just watching these deer, these bucks throughout the last couple years on trail camera, it's been fun to see them grow. And not every buck's going to make it, but, you know, as they start to get that upper age class five, six, seven years old, you know, that pyramid really comes up to a point. And right now it used to be that three, four year old age class was at the top and now we're up to that five, six, even seven year old buck in this area. So it's been fun to watch that process. In just a few years, these bucks, the maturity going up. So now we're going into year three, having taken a buck off the property, but now we got a handful of them, a handful of hit listers, and it's exciting. They don't all stay on the property, and we've been bumping deer off the property during the off season because of all the work that we're doing on it, but we know that year after year, consistently, they're gonna be using this property during the hunting season, and that's when we back out and we take all the human pressure out. All right, so it's September, early September. We're at the IMAX and we are taking out barbed wire fence. So this whole horse pasture area, we're taking out all the fence because it's just completely shutting down all deer traffic into this. Right now there's a four strand fence right on the backside. So it's always been blocked off. So we're gonna take that out and really open up this whole section so we get more deer flow. And we're just slowly working our way down the line and all the way back to the big pond. We're gonna get it done. There's really no big bucks on camera right here anyway. so. Got a few weeks till they move in, till that October shift. We're gonna get this wrapped up as soon as possible. So Skyscraper, you know, this is a buck that you've probably seen on the past episodes of White Tails from Scratch. Uh, we don't talk about him a lot, but you may be seeing a couple trail camera videos of him. And it's kind of a cool story because the first year we purchased the property is the first set of sheds that we found and he was a three-year-old buck over on the Cedar Springs side. So when I picked up these sheds, I actually didn't know what buck it was. I had a lot of trail camera videos of a deer that looked similar to it, but I thought it was just a two-year-old deer. Late in the year, by the time we got the property and, and typically the deer's body size at that time, the deer's really small. So I thought he looked like a two-year-old, um, big, tall, tight rack. I thought his genetics were phenomenal. But once I actually held those antlers, I knew, you know, this has gotta be a three and a half year old buck. The antlers, the tines were really long, reaching for the sky. That's why we called him Skyscraper. In 2019, we were really looking forward to seeing Skyscraper. And you know, he didn't really grow that much. For three to four, sometimes deer just have a year where they don't jump a lot. We started getting pictures of him. It wasn't a deer we wanted to target. We really set a goal on this property. A five and a half year old buck or higher. He was at four, not quite what we were looking for. And, um, but it was just cool to see him back, you know, starting to use the property, starting to see our improvements, our habitat improvements, and starting to really take hold. The AWS crew came up in 2019 and they did some hinge cutting in a couple of our core bedding areas. And I think that really helped Skyscraper when he came back in 2020. He really saw these changes, made this place home, and we started getting a lot more pictures of them. 
Now as a five-year-old buck, he actually made a pretty good leap from his four-year-old rack um, as far as antler growth goes, but still didn't look that big and it was kind of confusing. You know, this five-year-old buck, typically that's a really, really large deer, but it wasn't until we saw the sheds of this buck in person after the season that we realized, man, he must have just a, a big, huge body or something because his rack, the bases, the mass that he had on that rack, it was deceiving. He was actually a pretty big deer. So as a five-year-old buck, now he's, he's coming into this property, really likes the changes we made with some food plots and the hinge cutting, and he starts to show up you know, late October. He's sticking around a lot, using the bedding cover, searching for does on the land, and he's starting to daylight quite a bit early November. And looking back at trail cameras before, we didn't have as many pictures of him in the earlier years, but you know this is the time of year that he, he does daylight, he does expose himself, and moving forward you know, as a six-year-old buck, that's something we need to key on. 2021 heading into the season you know all these habitat improvements we're making on the property expanding food plots doing more cutting more fruit trees water holes all the things we're doing in the back of our mind we're really thinking you know what is this going to do for our chances on skyscraper as far as stand placements go really pushing deer in certain areas with changes myself my dad my brother everything we did skyscraper was definitely in the back of our minds and on the top of our hit list as a six and a half year old buck So the season comes in 2021, September, we're running trail cameras, no skyscraper. Early October, nothing really yet, no skyscraper. Some other bucks are starting to move in, starting to make that shift. And finally, we got a picture of skyscraper. Not a great one, but we knew at least, you know, he's back. Let's get ready. You know, this is our time. And we're really planning everything around this late October, early November pre-rut period. You know, we got some stands set that we think are just going to be dynamite for killing skyscraper in some incredible spots and we're not accessing, we're not walking in the property at all to try to ruin these scenarios. And, you know, we started getting some good pictures, some good videos on the reveals of Skyscraper, middle October, um, you know, October 15th, 16th, and then he just disappeared. For two weeks, we just couldn't figure out, you know, what happened to Skyscraper? Pre-rut's coming in, you know, we're supposed to be hunting this buck hard. Um, did somebody shoot him? You know, what happened? So I went out, pulled a couple SD cards, and when I put those in the computer and started watching the video, and I saw a video on October 17th, Skyscraper was limping into the property. Big hole on his left side under his armpit, skin hanging down, mouth open, you know, dried up blood on his leg. It wasn't looking good. You know, I didn't know if Skyscraper got hurt, got shot, um, got into a fight, didn't know what happened, but he limped into the hinge cut area and we hadn't seen him for two and a half weeks. Is Skyscraper dead? Is he just trying to lay low, sitting in our hinge cuts, trying to heal up before the rut? Is he in the standing corn? You know, what happened to him? And our number one hit list buck is nowhere to be seen. If he is alive, if he's not alive, if he's dead, you know, what happened to Skyscraper? And once you know it, Hot Dome must have brought him in front of the camera because he showed back up. And we were putting in some pretty good sits, you know, putting in the hours, kind of a low key strategy where we're hunting the edges of the property, our, our scent and our wind is blowing out so we're not impacting the core of the property. We're hoping, you know, he comes into these hinge cut areas, makes it a home, finds some does post rut, and we can then find some intel and really make a move on him. And it wasn't until November 20th where you know, we had a good wind shift coming throughout the day. The wind was south in the morning, north in the afternoon, midday the wind was going to shift. And I thought this could be a day. I sit all day long. Maybe I switch stands during the day during the wind shift when deer like to move. And I had a pretty slow hunt that morning. Um, the south wind hunting the north side of the property. Didn't really see much. A couple you know, fawns and does. I thought, well, maybe, maybe I'll just go home. You know, I got a couple kids at home. I got to help out for a few hours and I'll jump right back in the stand. And I'm sitting at home and I get a, a notification on my phone and there's a picture of Skyscraper headed right by the stand that I was going to jump in earlier in the day. All I can think of now is, did I miss my opportunity? So I got to get back in the stand and I know Skyscraper is probably very close to this stand location. It's not a spot that we've hunted a lot this year. We've, we've sat it a couple times. 
It's really thick, um, right on the edge of some cedars, some bedding, a little water hole next to it. If Skyscraper is still in here, if he didn't move off, he's really, really close to the stand and I gotta get in quiet. It's second gun season here in Minnesota and the deer are really hunkered down. And I think I got in quiet, you know, I went really slow, got in the stand, don't think I bumped anything. It's post rut, what's Skyscraper looking for? You know, he's probably headed to a food source, which is not where I'm sitting. Odds of him walking by me to find food at night is not good, so maybe I need to do a little bit of calling. So I grab my extinguisher and try to paint a picture for post rut. A couple light bleats. Waited a little bit, slid the slide down on that extinguisher deer call. Went to the buck setting. You know, some contact grunts. Maybe there's a buck chasing this doe. Maybe she is hot. You know, that picture I'm trying to paint here. And then I did a, a longer kind of semi-breeding grunt that I didn't get real aggressive like I was a big mature buck. Two minutes after I did that calling sequence, I started to hear noise back in the hinge cut, not very far at all, probably only 40, 50 yards. When I first get a glimpse of this deer walking through a little opening, I know it's skyscraper. He heard that calling and he's coming in. Not a lot of shooting opportunities. I'm really hopeful skyscraper just picks the right trail where I get a shot and I'm just being patient. So he kind of comes in, walks behind a cedar, and eventually walks out in one of my only shooting lanes I have, a 25 yard little gap. And when my pin hits his vitals, I release that arrow. And it's just one of those shots where you can tell. I have the lighted knock so it's easy to see where it hits. The sound, the reaction, just everything felt great about this shot. Oh my God. Oh my God. I just shot the buck here after all year. White dust from scratch, baby. Get it. Oh my God, we bought this property three years ago. We've put so much work into this property. Yes. I can't freaking believe it. I called him right in. And I just shot him. Like, freaking can't believe it. I just want to go get him. I think I smashed him. Kind of the cool thing is as he's running away, you know, he's running towards an area where I look back and kind of have a flashback three years ago, I found the first set of sheds on the property ever. So, you know, three years of watching this deer, having that whole thing come full circle to where, you know, I find this buck sheds. He grows three seasons, we watch him, we're doing the improvements and I get a chance at this six and a half year old white tail, just an incredible buck. And he dies in that same location as where I first found those antlers. That's a pretty cool feeling. He's right there. Oh my God. There's Skyscraper. <laughs> we got him. Oh. <sighs> Why don't you go put your hands on him first? Are you kidding me? Look at that guy. His body's huge. He is huge. Oh my gosh. Wow, kickers out of the base. Look at the size of the base, it's all gnarly. That's what it's all about. And it didn't matter if I shot him or you shot him. I mean, this was a group family effort. Six and a half year old buck on our property. It's First a buck. It's a relationship with this deer. It's a relationship with the land. It's a relationship with the family. And to hit your goal like that, our goal is to get these big five to eight year old deer. He's six. He's everything you could ever have thought he was gonna be, isn't he? Yeah. That's pretty impressive. We got skyscraper. <laughs> White tail from scratch. Finally paying off. So now skyscraper's gone, the number one target, and little splitters still around. So obviously my mindset has changed. Little splitter's been on the property since we've owned it. 
And the reason he got the name Little Splitter is because we had a splitter buck that was already on the property that was older and bigger. And then he had the same genetics, so we called him Little Splitter. Well, last year, the bigger one was taken. And so that opened the door for Little Splitter to become more of the core buck. Two years ago, we found his sheds. And at that time, he was three and a half years old. And that was pretty cool to get a good close look. You could tell he had great character. He wasn't a real wide buck, but he was gonna be a nice buck as he matured. Things are falling into place beautifully and we added a significant amount of food. In fact, it's the first real quantitative amount of food that was gonna make a difference. And it was diverse food. There was protein, there's carbs, there's greens, there's woody brows from the hinge cut. And we were pretty excited about going into this year. We start thinking about actual hunting strategy on how we're gonna take these target bucks. We're going to set up this stand in a place we call the IMAX. It just to instinctually, this is gonna be a kill stand. So we're getting it all set up and we got this one kind of a small sapling right by the tree and we wanted to knock that down and drop it behind the stand so the deer couldn't approach us in from the back. And JJ's up there working on the thing and I'm, I'll take care of it. And so I go down there with my little electric chainsaw and I'm, this tree gets hung up in the canopy and I just did the old lineman push on the sled and just exploded my calf and Achilles. Immediately, it's like flashing in my brain, I'm done, I'm done. I'm not gonna be able to hunt, I'm not gonna be able to do anything. I was just hoping going to the hospital that it wasn't tore to where I had to have surgery. At my age, you know, healing off of something major like that's gonna take a little while. So if I'm lucky, I might catch a little bit of late season when they're on the food. I start the physical therapy and during this process, the boys are so supportive and Brian, who works with us as well on our social media platform, they come up with this scheme that they're gonna create a blind and we call it the bat blind. So the bat blind basically is in the farmyard area, but off the back side of the farmyard area. It's the furthest building on the property from the farmyard. And the infrastructure that we built there was a transition, a transition from timber into a early food source, green, and a late season food source, which was corn. So we have the food sources, we have the transition, we have the privacy, and now we have this bat blind, which is a great piece of infrastructure that allows me to take advantage of all this stuff that we created. Not only am I out hunting, but my leg is really starting to heal up well. I'm going through physical therapy. I took really good care of it after the blunder and I can actually use it. I don't even have to be in my boot now and I don't need my crutches. So things are looking fantastic for this season. So it's getting to be that magic time of the year. We know these bigger bucks are gonna have windows where they're gonna show up during daylight. And so finally the day arrives, the perfect window and I just had a feeling. I just, there was something about it. Not that I'd seen Little Splitter in any specific spot where I had him patterned. I just had a gut instinct. And I watched JJ throughout the years and I watched him pick stands and do sits based off of a gut instinct. And it pays off. It, it's been paying off for him. So I just decided to go with that instinct and go for it. Now it's a place I shouldn't have gone necessarily because of the wind, because the wind was right on the edge. And guess where it was? It was Achilles. We named the stand that we set up where I got injured, Achilles. I don't know, it was like everything was lining up. This was the stand I needed to get to. And if I was gonna go there, I had to get there early because the deer will be out into the food and you don't want to bump. 
I knew the wind was right on the edge. I mean, going right down where they're gonna be coming out and transitioning into food. But I had enough mile per hour to maybe get away with it. Well, the does start coming out, start piling into the corn. They're making a bunch of noise, this and that. And I'm thinking to myself, geez, any second that deer could show up. And there was a bunch of crashing going on in the corn and I looked down over in there and I was trying to see what was going on and this and that. And then I looked back where they were coming out and here's this big body standing there. Oh my God, it's a little splitter. I knew immediately it was a little splitter. You can't miss it. First thing I do, started calming myself and went through the process that I'd been practicing throughout that evening. Got on him, released the bolt. And it was over. Well, I got a shot at a little splitter. I think I got a good shot on him. Might have been a hair low, but I think I got a good hit on him. So I'm gonna set it out, wait it out and see what happens the target since the skyscraper went down and I think I put a good hit on him. So I get down out of my stand after I wait a little while I was pretty confident with the shot I heard the sound I know what that sound sounds like good hit on the deer same with his reaction got down there I couldn't find anything my arrows just completely coated with blood it was such a thin coat of blood that I started to second guess myself. I said, you know what, let's just be safe. This is a deer that you do not want to mess up on. And let's just pull out of here and we'll come back in the morning. And we go down in there and smashed him. Just smashed him. And in fact, we didn't realize it, but little splitter became Big Splitter. It was everything that I could ever expect out of, of harvesting this deer, and I just can't explain the way I felt. It was a feeling of accomplishment based on having achieved something my whole life and getting our own property. You chase things and you have goals your whole life. My dreams of being active in the outdoors, and then turning it into a business, and then turning it into a national brand, and just achieving these successes and becoming financially independent, and having your own property and your family around you, and chasing and shooting big deer, then all of a sudden you catch it. You catch that thing you've been chasing your whole life. And that moment, I caught it. I caught everything I've been chasing my whole life. I am just so grateful. The enjoyable part about this property is that it's a real team effort. So everything we have to do, we get to do as a family. And that goes not with just the management piece, but it also comes along with the actual hunting strategy. So everything's been a team effort and we fail as a team and we prosper as a team. It's been really great just to see JJ and my dad have some success and I enjoy that part of it just as much as I do the hunting part of it. You know, White Tails from Scratch filming this series and bringing it to the viewers is really just, it falls right in line with everything we do at Deer Society. It's education driven, you know, we're going to show step by step the improvements we can make to this property and hopefully it can help you out in the field as well.